Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be, uh, you know, the slides are going to be the same as from yesterday. And yesterday's video was titled, "Who, uh, why this September or, you know, why this September, upcoming September will be cold and snowy. <clears throat> today's video is, who will see snow this September? So it's a little bit of a different question. You can see that uh, it's answering not why you will see snow or why uh, yeah why and will you um this is uh who will see the snow uh specifically and uh you know consider subscribing to this channel consider liking the video it's a red subscribe button it really helps out this channel <clears throat> so really consider doing that uh, really consider doing that thank you so uh, i'll go through these slides really quickly <clears throat> since they are the same again as yesterday yesterday's slide so hopefully this video is under 10 minutes and you can see this is a three to four week outlook hasn't changed but i still want to talk about it for those that haven't watched yesterday's video <clears throat> and just watched uh, and are you know new to this channel you can see this is a three to four week outlook spanning from the t uh, 7th of J september through the 20th of september and uh, you can see below average conditions for a good portion of the central plains the southeast northeast above average while the northwest is above average as well so that gives us a good idea of where the cold temperatures will be notice that the precipitation probability <clears throat> you know granted this is experimental so they don't have much confidence in this but um, <clears throat> you can see that they have uh, a good portion of uh, the the country above average, but also a good portion below average in the northwest and in the east. Here, but notice how where <clears throat> where the cold is, the above average precip is as well. So where it is chilly and below average, <clears throat> it could drop down several times to below 32. And if there's a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit of precip, that could turn to snow. So we have to monitor that and keep track of that. Uh, that's why uh, you know the chances are increased for that area. They're very uh, high in high risk of some snow. This is the you know, six to ten outlook, which has changed from yesterday. <clears throat> I updated these slides, and you can see that uh, it's below average for a good portion of uh, the north and northeast, but it is above average for a good portion as well. I would not have as high confidence as the Climate Prediction Center has for. <clears throat> the uh, oranges or the above averages being so uh, far north and east, I would uh, extend <clears throat> the blues to about this area, and the rest should be above average. But you know, this is their forecast. But I still want to show you that they're showing below average temperatures, which is still usually an accomplishment by itself, since <clears throat> since they are biased towards uh, being on the warmer side. That's naturally what they are. And this is the six to ten, so spanning from four through the eighth. <clears throat> and the next slide is 8 to 14, which is spanning uh, from, I think, well, let's see, um, the 6 through the, uh, I forgot which, okay, whatever. Um, but you can see it's still showing below average temperatures, maybe a little bit more now, and <clears throat> like greater area, but still less confidence in the orange and blue. And that's obvious because it's further out. And if in case you don't know those colors, uh, the, the blues and the shadings of the blues, not the not the value or magnitude of the cold, it's how confident they are <clears throat> that the blues or the oranges, the below average or above average temperatures will occur. So you can see their confidence is uh, <clears throat> pretty actually high for being 8 to 14 days, days out. And uh, <clears throat> again, puts us at a risk for those areas if there's like a big fall blast, <clears throat> you know, it brings down temperatures below the below freezing and we have precip which is considered supposed to be above average at this time as well uh, we could be looking at uh, you know some snow this is an image that i showed you yesterday as well on previous video and this basically demonstrates <clears throat> one of the possible cold fall blasts that could occur you know i'm not saying that exactly the setup will be like shown on this map but similar to this there they will be there will be periods where it's <clears throat> where it's 15 to 20 degrees below average in parts of Minnesota, like in North Dakota and Southern Canada, <clears throat> sorry, uh, UP of Michigan, Wisconsin, and M Montana, all those areas could, you know, possibly be seeing some snow with this if it would to, if it you came to, uh, you know, reality, this, this below average temperatures, and it's definitely a possibility. <clears throat> if you look at the composite temperature anomalies, uh, this is, uh, you could see, 
Okay, uh, this is, okay, yeah, so this is a bunch of Septembers that had a negative EPO, and an EPO is the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, it, there's a whole bit of science behind it, it's a teleconnection, and basically all you need to know is that it's forecasted to become negative, and this is what a negative uh, typically impacts the September, like, <clears throat> and even, this may not seem a great magnitude, but look, that's two to four degrees below averages any uh, in these areas. That is actually pretty good, um, you know, pretty good anomaly. That definitely is <clears throat> enough to uh, prove some snow. And this isn't just for one or two days. This is for the whole month, which adds to that factor. <clears throat> this is a what a negative AO. <clears throat> looks like on a typical September, you can see again a bunch of years, 2010, 2001, out spanning all the way back down to 1951, and <clears throat> you can see that these composite temperature anomalies are also showing around negative 2 degrees in difference, not as much as the uh, EPO, but the AO is basically the Ar Arctic Oscillation, this is a negative, how it impacts September, and it's also forecasted to be negative in the next couple of days and weeks to come, so... Uh, that is that that further again increases the risk for some above average snowfall and you know possibly some more folks seeing snow in areas where they wouldn't usually see snow in September. But obviously, you know, you won't be seeing snow most likely in September in Iowa or Illinois or Wisconsin or mm, Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin is possible. But you know, uh, Minnesota, northern Minnesota definitely possibly. Uh, have a good chance of seeing the snow. And this is what I think <clears throat> the final snowfall map will look like. So if you live in the mountains somewhere, wherever in the mountains, in higher elevation, and your area usually gets snow in September, and it's not marked in this area, I do apologize. I didn't, you know, I marked out like the big ranges where they usually see quite a bit of snow, in the Cascades, the Front Range, <clears throat> but you know. Okay, if there's like an area here in Utah where that peak gets snow in September and you didn't mark it on this map, I'm sorry, I, you know, I just went for the more general areas where it's more populated, and you can see what I did was, <clears throat> usually they don't see snow here in this area <clears throat> until about October, okay, but I think that they, uh, they will see here, <clears throat> they will see snow here in September, you can see northern North Dakota, northern Minnesota, parts of Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin, UP of Michigan, and maybe Michigan. Notice how there's two shades. The first one is <clears throat> higher confidence in uh, seeing snow. This is not the indicating the magnitude of how much snow. This is just indicating <clears throat> the 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 confidence that I have, and you can see, I would say that is around 50 to 60 percent confidence that, or you know, 60 to 70 that it will snow there. Here I have 50 to 60, or 40 to 60 in this lighter shade. I think that snow will occur. And then in the other areas, it's too big of a hit or miss. It's under like 30 percent. So obviously, some areas in South Dakota could still see snow in North Dakota as well, parts of Montana. Just I think these areas will be best known for it. Also, look at the northeast part, extreme parts of northern Maine, seeing around 60 to 70 percent chance of seeing snow. And then <clears throat> parts of uh, upper elevated locations, which were the biggest ones that I could find and uh, mark out. And you can see I gave uh, gave them again like 60 to 70, but a lighter shade of a lighter region of sh different shade of colors also there in the northeast that is marked at around 50 40 to 60 percent uh i was going to end the video there and i decided to show you because i don't know if i'll be able to get a hurricane update in by itself <clears throat> in the next couple of days i'll try to but notice how <clears throat> the if i mean if you've been watching the news you'll hear how uh, trop uh, trop uh, hurricane Dorian could now be a major hurricane <clears throat> when it's gonna uh, be impacting parts of Florida and the US so notice how right now it's still a weak category 1 hurricane <clears throat> and it's at 990 somewhere along, along those lines maybe 991 <clears throat> you know plus or minus five millibars and you can see that it really rapidly increases intensifies previously it was thought that it would track through these islands and these have high terrain and this would kind of you know interfere with that strengthening of this hurricane but uh <clears throat> notice how this hurricane will actually be north of that and but still take that left turn right for florida and that, that definitely is not good and if we were to for the, wait for this to load hopefully it does <clears throat> you could see that uh, it definitely tracks right towards Florida, and this is the latest model run, has it at 958, which is probably a Category 3, Category 4 hurricane, <clears throat> and uh, it just rides right up. Notice, look at that, how there's snow up here, a pretty big snowstorm to occur in Nova Scotia and uh, Canada right there, but notice, look, the hurricane uh, it tracks kind of through Florida along the coastline, and some models earlier were showing it coming back off, restrengthening and re-hitting the coast. This model 
Brazil still has a very strong hurricane or, or tropical storm at least off the coast and this would uh, impact uh, the Northeast and at least like the Virginias so that's definitely something to keep an eye on for uh, so that's you know I just want to include that in just for people's safety so I'll, I might and I probably will be making videos about the hurricane it's just that <clears throat> you know um, as of now I still uh, need to um, figure out when I have time to do that but thank you guys so much for watching I'll catch you all guys in the next episode see ya bye